Chris Wallace is being attacked on Twitter by hordes of angry Fox News viewers for a segment he did challenging the uh, narrative from the Trump administration on the southern border wall. So uh, in a recent video here, uh, I'm going to show you Donald Trump basically takes on Stephen Miller and has a little bit of a testy conversation, a little bit heated, and I want to show you that right now. And then we're going to get to the response. Watch. I know that you are a constitutional conservative and you believe the Constitution should be interpreted as written, correct? Yes. Okay. Here's Article 1, Section 9, Clause 7 of the Constitution as written. No money shall be drawn from the Treasury but in consequence of appropriations made by law. Isn't what President Trump wants to do a clear violation of what the founders, of what James Madison talked about, is giving Congress the power of the purse? No, because Congress in 1976 passed the National Emergencies Act and gave the president the authority as a result of that to invoke a national emergency in many different circumstances, but among them for the use of military construction funds. And that was the point I was making earlier, is that if the president were to say we're going to use military construction funds to say increase the perimeter around a base, in Bagram, around a base in Syria, nobody would even say anything about it. But, but, let, 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 we have 4,000 troops on the border right now, and as a result of that mission, they need to secure those areas where they're patrolling. But let's talk about national emergencies. National emergencies have been declared 59 times right. since 1976 when the law was passed, the National Emergencies Act. Can you point to a single instance, even one, where the president asked Congress for money, Congress refused to give him that money, and the president then invoked national emergency powers to get the money. You name one foreign threat in the world today, outside this country's borders, that currently kills more Americans than the threats crossing our southern border? You know, the, the, the joy of this is I get to ask you questions. You the, don't answer get to ask no, my, the answer is no. But the, oh, then, no then answer my question. Can you name one case where a president has asked Congress for money, Congress has refused, and the president has then invoked national powers to get the money anyway? Well, this current situation... Just yes or no, sir. I love that. <laughs> it's a yes or no question. And he can answer yes or no. Because he keeps going back to the... Oh, well, you know, it, 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 it's military and he's, he's allowed to do so. Yeah, but has it's never happened. This has literally never happened. And by the way, he references, he goes back to the 4,000 troops in the border uh, because it's like, well, I mean, if we, look, if we allocated funding to, to build walls around Syria, uh, you know, bases in Syria and Iraq. So what are you saying that this country, that America is the equivalent right now of Syria and Iraq? No, that's ridiculous. And by the way, those 4,000 border troops, they literally are standing around with nothing to do. They uh, actually can't operate on American soil, for one. Uh, and so, what? They've got them, what, digging trenches and putting up fencing. Wow. And that whole thing was nothing more than a border stunt uh, that's incredibly costly to the American taxpayer. But nonetheless, um, Fox News viewers were not happy about this segment. And I want to read you some of these tweets, these responses. And again, this is from Trump's biggest supporters here. And so we're just going to dive into the world of crazy, uh, starting with Julie. Julie says, Chris Wallace is a rude liberal hack who constantly rudely interrupts his guests. Okay, that well, that's fun. Uh, so first, he's very, very rude, right? He's rude. He interrupts people. However, Greg Hansen says, Chris Wallace is such a prissy twit. Trying to give Stephen Miller a hard time like some snotty teenage girl. But wait, he's, is he prissy or is he rude and pushy? Weird. I, I don't think you can be the both things at the same time. <laughs> uh, Matt says, Chris Wallace is an idiot, making himself look like an uneducated a-hole. Really? Um, he was the one that brought up that... Hey, we did this, what, 59 times? Is there 52, 59? can't remember the number. Weirdly enough, that's not helpful to my point. <laughs> so it's over 50 times we made this, uh, they, they did this emergency declaration, right? Uh, and not one time was it used in the way that it's being used right now, which kind of stands out. 
which is the point that Chris Wallace is trying to make. So I, I don't know who the idiot here. Well, actually, I do know who the idiot here is, and it's Stephen Miller. Uh, but more, Cindy Faust says, I so dislike the hypocrisy from Fox News Sunday and Chris Wallace, who never treats the Dems or anyone in the Obama administration like he just treated Steve Miller. Steve Miller, you rock. Wow. 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 Uh, and look, to be fair, actually, Chris Wallace has been really tough on Democrats. But you know who's really he's really tough on? Progressives. The media is deeply tough. Like they they are they're they're disdainful of progressives. So whenever a progressive comes on TV, if they're ever invited, they get a terrible treatment. Which look, sometimes Democrats, to be fair, do get patty cakes. Uh, and sometimes they're tough. And look, Chris Wallace, I think, has always been pretty tough um, on on you know Democrats and Republicans. Uh, but anyway, there's more. Carol Clark says. Chris Wallace needs to show his guests respect and shut his mouth. It's not about him. It's about our country. He's not in the White House. Thank God. But we're, we're talking about facts here. The only thing Chris Wallace is doing is asking a question. He's doing his job. And he's saying, what is the basis for this emergency? You never gave me an answer. So what Stephen Miller was doing is that he was dodging and weaving and trying so hard not to answer the question. Uh, and so that's, look, I, I don't think the guest deserves respect. I think the guest deserves to be answered, uh, to be asked fair questions. And this is an incredibly fair question. All right. There's more. Denise Armour says, anyone watching Chris Wallace pompous ads? Okay. <laughs> Uh, Frederick Beckman says, I'm watching Fox News Sunday and that's enough. Chris Wallace is a hardcore liberal. Get him off Fox. He's no longer a journalist. He's a liberal pr protectionist. You know, what's funny is that Chris Wallace in his politics is actually deeply conservative. But apparently anybody who disagrees with Trump about anything, especially about the wall, is somehow a liberal. That's insanity. Ron West says, Chris Wallace, the hatred for President Trump and the stupidity about securing the country is obvious on this program. No, what's stupid is building a 20 to 50, oh, I'm sorry, 20 to 70 billion dollar wall to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Remember, according to the Trump administration's own figures, illegal immigration is down from, from Mexico, from the southern border, is down 40%. It is at the lowest that it's been in 40 years, I should say. Um, Timothy R. Warheim says, that's it, Fox. I'm done. Chris Wallace and Ann Coulter will kill your network. Pay attention to your audience. Which basically means lie to me. Please lie to me and tell me exactly what I want to hear. And don't actually challenge anybody if they are wrong on their facts. They have lost look, Fox News. Trump has lost Fox News. At least Fox News Sunday. Sarah White says, I tuned into Fox News to see, uh, because, uh, to Sunday, sorry, because I wanted to see the annual Rush Limbaugh interview. Ugh. Trump, uh, Chris Wallace is so bad, however, that I had to turn it off and record it later so I can fast through his libtard babble and only watch the good part, which I assume is whenever, uh, Trump, uh, I'm sorry, Rush Limbaugh talks. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's more. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Wallace is a facilitator of Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. Oh, that's fun. Um, let's see more. Um, Chris Wallace is nothing but a worm. The only muscles that he has in his body are the ones around his mouth that he has developed by running his mouth and showing his ignorance. The president is trying to save the country from invasion from south of the border. Emergency? Yes. But what invasion? Again, the administration says we're at a 40-year 40, 40 low in illegal border crossings. It's not an invasion. The caravans are people basically claiming asylum, trying to run from MS-13, trying to run from corrupt governments in the South, in South America. And they go to the border and they surrender themselves in order to get checked out so that maybe they have a chance of coming into the United States as refugees. 
look, this, these are the same people, by the way, that thought President Obama was going to invade Texas with Operation Jade Helm. So there's, there's no getting through to them, right? There's more. Obama lied, says, saw Fox News Sunday today. Chris Wallace tried to peddle fake news by repeating the fact that most drugs are caught at ports of entry. What a moron. Catch 10 pounds of ports uh, at ports of entry and miss 10 truckloads of unsecured, uh, unsecured border crossing and claim all drugs were caught at the port. But here's the thing. that That's the Trump administration that's pointing that out. That's Border Patrol. Are you now saying that Border Patrol is lying to you? What Border Patrol says is fake news? The Border Patrol is pushing for the wall. But even they said they were super, super proud of that fentanyl bust. And that's, of course, they're, they're, what they're uh, referencing. But here's the thing, right? So you would have to be the dumbest drug dealer ever to send anything through a legal port of entry if it is that easy to go through an unsecured border crossing. I'm just saying. You'd have to be really, really dumb. What, they're in business, right, to sell as many drugs as possible. So if there is an unsecured part of the border that they could go through easily without getting caught at a port of entry, wouldn't you think they would all go through that? You, you think we would have no uh, no drugs attempting to cross through legal ports of entry? I, I'm just saying, it, it wouldn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So that kind of tells me, logically, that not a lot of drugs go through unsecured uh, places of the border. And why would that be? Well, in a lot of unsecured places, we have natural barriers to this, right? Natural barriers, mountains, uh, rivers, etc., Places that are not easy to cross. In fact, there are a lot of places, numerous places, where it'd be impractical to build a concrete wall or even fencing because of these natural barriers that are so difficult to cross. So logically, look, it tells me that, look, since it's already really hard to do in some of these places and the fact that there's a lot of places that or a lot of drugs that try to go through legal ports of entry, well... It tells me that we don't necessarily need a wall. If it's that hard to get drugs in, then why do we need a wall in the first place? It, again, it, logic, right? I'm trying to think about this logically, which, look, maybe I'm overthinking it. <laughs> but apparently, there was no thought into this entire thing at all. There's more. Uh, Grandma Zora says, why is Chris Wallace on Fox Trent? Is he trying to be fair and, uh, and unbiased? He's a Democrat. Put him on CNN where he belongs. Um, yeah, Chris Wallace is a registered Republican. Just saying. Um, you know who else was also a registered Republican but uh, became an independent? Joe Scarborough. He was a huge fan of Donald Trump. Had him on the show all the time. But now, no more. Uh, Mule Man 2 says... After care, long and careful consideration, I've concluded Chris Wallace is an a-hole and lib-turd. How very smart of you. You put those... Oh, you put liberal and turd together and you made lib-turd. Very smart. Very smart, Mule Man. Credit to you. Credit to you. <laughs> um, Allison Armitage says, Chris Wallace is a progressive. No, he's not. That's absurd. Uh, I bet Chris Wallace and Fox News voted for Hillary. Charlotte Lambert says, Chris Wallace is a do Deutsch bag. Why is he even on Fox News? Hey, look, I'm just saying it uh, the way that they spelled it. Uh, there's more. <laughs> um, Aaron Meyer says, Chris Wallace showing his true anti-Trump colors and his support to the Democrat immigration agenda. This isn't journalism. It's Gerbillion propaganda. Do you want to know what the Democrat immigration agenda was in 2016? Build a fence. That's what Hillary Clinton ran on. Building a fence. Ridiculous. Uh, let's see. Uh, Carolyn Spinnercon says, Chris Wallace is bullying and hammering his guest, Stephen Miller. Chris Wallace cannot be defended for his audacity. Chris Wallace is definitely pushing the Democrats' agenda for him. I thought Fox News was supposed to be accommodating to both sides of opinion. Not bigot Wallace. There's so much. There's so much. But I think we'll just leave it at, I don't think you understand what the word bigot means. Just saying. Um, there's all sorts of things. Uh, let's see. 
I'm gonna, but I'm gonna get to the uh, last couple, right? Um, let's see. Uh, Patrick Claber says, "You know, the joy of this is I get to ask you questions. You don't get to ask me." And he's quoting Chris Wallace, and says, "Chris Wallace is such an arrogant Jew." Oh, so finally it comes out. Oh, well, he's a Jew, and he's an arrogant Jew. You know how they are. No, no. Tell me, Patrick. I'm really curious. How are the Jews? You know who else is Jewish, by the way? Stephen Miller. But why does it even matter? Why? It doesn't matter to me. I don't care if he's Jewish. You shouldn't care if he's Jewish. But the reason is, is because they can't help themselves. They're anti-Semitic. When you want to talk about Ilhan Omar, Ilhan Omar had nothing to apologize for. Uh, and that's my opinion, right? Uh, what she said was not controversial at all. No, the real anti-Semitism comes from the right wing. Just the fact that they consider calling someone Jewish as an insult tells you everything you need to know. Look, that, that in the right wing circles, which include neo-Nazis and all those other very fine people that President Trump called on, um, just the fact that they think that it's a that it's a, a, a an insult, right? It really makes you think. Look, I, I've been called Jewish before. I think it's I think it's hilarious because I'm neither ethnically nor religiously Jewish. But even if I were, who cares? That's not an insult. I mean, but here's the thing: they care. They care so much about this because they are deeply anti-Semitic, hateful people. One more. Chris Wallace, according to Aaron Tactical, is a traitor. A traitor. So if you ask questions and you disagree with the president, then you're a traitor. Look, that's how these people feel. It's not, oh, we've got different opinions on what to do with the border. Because look, um, Democrats have different opinions on what to do with the border. We don't believe that there's a national emergency. We don't believe immigration is an invasion. We actually do believe that you should vet people coming in. You should vet them, and if they're criminals, you don't let them in. Wow, that's really simple. And that we should increase immigration judges to make sure that they, their claims and asylum claims can get processed faster in a timely order. Because we actually do believe that legal immigration is great for this country, and we actually want, yes, a decent amount of it. Besides, you help legal immigration, make it easier to become a citizen, and you have less illegal immigration, which means, of course, when they work, they actually contribute more to the economy and then get something back. I know, controversial, right? But no, the conversation now is, if you don't agree with me, well, you're a traitor. You know what we do to traitors? We murder them. That's it. Again, what do you do with people who do treason, right? Who are traitors. Look, what do you do with this? And that's the question, right? The reason I'm doing these, this segment, which is super long, I understand. But the question is, what, what do you do with these people? A full third of the country is positively unhinged from reality. They have been lied to and manipulated by pundits and, and people basically lying for money and politicians all for their own gain. I mean, it, look, at first the grift was... Pretty good. It was making them a lot of money, so they didn't care, right? But it's get, gone beyond that. They've literally created a monster. These people are furious. They're angry, and they're so deeply misinformed. And they continue to get riled up, and they don't believe in facts anymore. What do you do with people who don't believe in facts? I, what do you do? What do you do? I, you can't reach them anymore, can you? And that's the scariest part. If you can't reach them and reason with them, and they're angry, and they're armed, what happens? What happens? I don't know. I don't think any of us can answer that. And that's the scary part. And the other part is, look, you want to think that this is a problem created by Trump? It's not. It's created by decades of conservative propaganda, and, and people lying, and, and creating false narratives, and actual fake news, right? This is something that goes so far beyond Trump. We will be dealing this with this long after Donald Trump's gone. Long after Donald Trump, 
long after these conservative uh, politicians and long after these grifters that continue to make money off this this horrible, horrific, vitriolic hatred. And so I will leave you with that lovely thought. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.